Welcome to the Cyber Patriot 16 New Coach Workshop. My name is Rachel Zimmerman. I'm the Cyber Patriot National Commissioner, and I will be walking you through this presentation, which will explain all you need to know about the Cyber Patriot National Youth Cyber Defense Competition. Cyber Patriot is a program of the Air and Space Forces Association, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Cyber Patriot has seven program elements, which range from elementary school level all the way up to senior citizens. Today, we will be focusing on the National Youth Cyber Defense Competition, which is for middle school and high school students. Cyber Patriot's overarching goal is to draw students to STEM education. We do this through a fun nationwide competition that challenges teams of students to find and fix cybersecurity vulnerabilities within virtual operating systems. Youth organizations can register the teams where the coach can then add the students. We provide online training modules and practice rounds, as well as access to Cisco Networking Academy. Teams then compete in our scored online rounds of competition. The top teams advance to our national finals competition. Students learn a variety of skills when participating in Cyber Patriot. Among them are technical skill building, leadership, teamwork, and creative problem solving. At our national finals competition, there's also scholarship opportunities for our top teams. Once students have competed in Cyber Patriot, they also gain access to our alumni network where we post internship and job opportunities from Cyber Patriot sponsors. Next, I'll explain the roles on the Cyber Patriot team. The first is the coach, which is the adult leader of the team. They must be verified by the organization that is registering the team. Each coach can have up to five teams registered to them. They are the administrative lead for the team and are responsible for registering the competitors. They also act as the sole point of contact for all competition related correspondence. Coaches must be present to observe the Cyber Patriot competition rounds and enforce competition rules to and to ensure team safety. They do not need to be technically savvy. Next is the competitor. These are youth members of the organization that is registering the team. They must be registered to the roster by the coach, and there can be up to six competitors per team. A competitor may only compete on one team. During a round of competition, there is a maximum of five active competitors on the team, and there can be one substitute. Next, let's talk about the optional roles on a team, the technical mentor and the team assistant. These individuals are often outside of the organization that is registering the team. A technical mentor is a technically savvy volunteer who wants to support the team and help the students learn what they need to know. There's a flexible time commitment. Many mentors want to be at every practice, while others only want to give a one-hour presentation once a month. Mentors uh, should be experienced with Windows, Linux, or Cisco networking. Mentors must be at least 18 years old and pass a background check. Team assistants are non-technical volunteers for the team. They're kind of the soccer mom of the Cyber Patriot world. They will help with the administrative and logistical tasks for the team. Again, there's a flexible time commitment, and uh, these team assistants uh, must also pass a background check and be at least 18 years old. Cyber Patriot has three competition divisions. The open and all service division are for high school age competitors, while the middle school division is for middle school age competitors. The open division is open to public, private, parochial, magnet, or charter schools, as well as homeschool groups and other youth organizations. The all service division is for junior ROTCs from Air Force, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Space Force, and Coast Guard, as well as Civil Air Patrol and US Naval Sea Cadet units. The middle school division is for public, private, parochial, magnet, or charter schools, as well as other middle school aged youth organizations. The three divisions are independent from each other, and teams are only scored against their own respective divisions. There is a small registration fee for teams who register for Cyber Patriots. In the open division, it's $225 per team, and in the middle school division, it's $175 per team. 
we offer a 20% discount for any teams who are registered before July 1st, bringing the Open Division registration fee to $180 per team and $140 at the Middle School Division. In the All Service Division, the fees are waived due to agreements we have with the headquarters of the organizations that represent the All Service Division. We also offer fee waivers for Title I schools or from all girl teams. As you can see, Cyber Patriot has had strong representation in the past across all three divisions. Last year, there were over 5,200 teams registered to the competition, which represented over 20,000 competitors. This is the Cyber Patriot competition timeline. It's divided into important registration deadlines, our training rounds, our middle school division competition rounds, and our high school division competition rounds. We'll be talking more in depth about this in just a second. The time commitment for a Cyber Patriot team varies greatly from organization to organization. Some teams meet once a month, while other teams meet multiple times a week. Cyber Patriot recommends one to two meetings per week. For teams that need to meet less often, practice tasks can also be assigned to competitors to be completed outside of meeting times. For new teams, students can also learn one topic and then teach that topic to teammates at the meetings. Now we'll cover the registration process for Cyber Patriot. We'll start by covering some important registration deadlines. Registration opened back on April 1st. Teams registered before July 1st receive the early registration discount. The registration deadline is October 3rd. This is the last day that a coach can log in and register a new team for Cyber Patriot. Competitors do not need to be registered at this point and no other registration tasks need to be done. October 25th is the competitor registration deadline. This is the last day to add a new competitor to a team or to move competitors between two teams. October, or November 15th is the registration fee deadline. This is the last day to submit your registration fee payments, request a fee waiver, or submit a purchase order for payment. First step in registering as a new volunteer is to complete a volunteer registration form. This creates your login for the competition dashboard. To complete the volunteer registration, go to www.uscyberpatriot.org Click Register and then click Team or Volunteer Registration. You then complete all the fields on the form and click Register. You should receive a confirmation email as soon as you hit Register, but if you don't, no problem, you can still log in on the Cyber Patriot website. To sign in, you will click Competition Sign In in the upper right hand corner of the Cyber Patriot homepage. You then enter your username, which is your email address, and the password that you just created during the volunteer registration process. Once you are logged in, you will scroll down until you get to a blue welcome box. It should say welcome and then your first name and last name. You then click create team. Registering a team from your account automatically makes you the coach of the team. If you do not see your name after the welcome sign, there may be a glitch where the website auto logs you in. To fix this, click sign out and then sign right back in. This will refresh your security token and allow you to see your information. Once you click create team, it will navigate you to a registration form. You then complete all information and click submit. The form must be completed for each individual team that you want to register, up to five per coach. Team applications must be approved by a designated verification official. This is usually a school administration or organization leadership who can verify your status at that organization to work unsupervised with you. Please note that coaches cannot verify themselves. Once the registration form is submitted, you will now see the team information on the competition dashboard. Under the Options drop-down menu, you will have the option to resend the verification email or to edit team information. Let's take a more in-depth look at the information displayed on the competition dashboard. The first item is the team number. This is used to identify your team on scoring documents and is what you should provide to the Cyber Patriot Program Office when you contact us. This is assigned by Cyber Patriot. 
Next is the organization name. This is your team's official name and will be used on award certificates. If you need to change this, please do so by contacting the Cyber Patriot Program Office. Next is the team nickname. This is the unofficial fun team name. It's used to designate multiple teams at, at one organization. It's also used on award certificates and you can change it at any time by using the edit team option in the options drop down menu for that team. The next is the organization type. You selected this during the registration process and it determines what competition division you compete in and what your registration fee is. If you need to change this, please do so by contacting the Cyber Patriot Program Office. Next is the team status. It indicates how far along you are in the approval process. A status of awaiting verification means that the verification official has not yet approved the team. If you need to change your verifier information, you can do so by selecting the options drop down menu and then going to edit team. If you need to resend the verifier email, you can also do that from the options drop down menu. A status of awaiting approval means that the Cyber Patriot Program Office is doing a final review of the team. Approved means that all steps have been completed and the team is now ready to compete. The payment status lets you know where the team is in the payment process. A status of not available means the team has not yet been approved and payment cannot be submitted at this time. Awaiting payment means we're still awaiting payment. There's an option to pay by credit card, view invoice PDF, or request a fee waiver from the options drop-down menu for that team. Waiver requested means you've requested the waiver, but it has not yet been granted by the Cyber Patriot Program Office. We may still be waiting for additional information from you or for you to register competitors if you're requesting an all-girl fee waiver. Waived means that the fee waiver has been granted for the team. When you request a fee waiver, a form is brought up, and from there you need to select the reason you are requesting a fee waiver and add some additional justification. For Title I schools, you will need to provide a letter from school administration stating the Title I status for the current school year and email that to info at uscyberpatriot.org. Once we have received that letter, we will waive the registration fee for the team. An all-girl team must register the competitors to the roster before we grant that fee waiver. There are multiple options to pay the registration fee for Cyber Patriot. To pay by credit card, select the Pay by Credit Card option from the Options drop-down menu. You can submit a purchase order to info at uscyberpatriot.org, or you can mail a check to the Air and Space Forces Association at the address on the invoice. As a reminder, the registration fee for an Open Division team is $225, with teams who registered before July 1st receiving a discount, making it $180 per team. Middle school division teams are $175 per team, with the early registration discount bringing it down to $140. All service division teams are waived due to agreements we have with the headquarters. Team fees are due by November 15th, 2023. Once the team is approved, you can now register competitors. To do so, use the Options drop-down menu and select Register Competitor. You will then need to provide the student's first name, last name, email address, and t-shirt size. There are two additional agreement boxes saying you have parental approval and you understand the Cisco terms, and then you click Submit. Once you click Submit, the competitor is then emailed an optional questionnaire for them to complete. They click the link in the email address that they are sent and complete the additional registration form. It is strongly encouraged, but not required for the, for the students to complete the questionnaire. A competitor status of registration pending means that the competitor has not yet completed the questionnaire. A status of registered means that they have. Rosters must be finalized by October 25th, 2023. This is the last day for you to add a new competitor or to move competitors between teams. 
If you click the drop down arrow at the end of the competitor row, you have the option to update the competitor, which means you can update the email address or change the t-shirt size, delete a competitor, which will remove them from the roster, or if you have multiple approved teams, you can also change team from one to the other. Please note that the system will not allow you to put more than six competitors on a team. You can also resend the email, which will resend the link to the competitor questionnaire. Approved teams also have the ability to find a mentor. They do this by using the Find a Mentor button on the Cyber Patriot Competition Dashboard. You are then brought to a page where you can filter mentors by state. There's a checkbox on whether or not you want to include virtual mentors who can virtually mentor your team from a remote location. You then click Find Mentors to populate results. Mentors are then listed alphabetically by city. Remember, there are two types of mentors. Technical mentors have cybersecurity knowledge and want to help train teams, while team assistants want to offer administrative support for the teams. All mentors who are listed will have completed a background check and have a status of available, meaning they want teams to contact them. Once you have found a mentor you are interested in reaching out to, click Contact Mentor to message them about helping your team. When you want to invite a mentor to the team after you have communicated with them and they have agreed to help your team, you then use the Invite Mentor button. Once a mentor is invited, they are then added to your roster. A status of invited means the mentor has received the invitation, but not yet logged into their own competition dashboard to accept it. A status of active means the mentor has accepted the invitation and is officially paired with the team. Mentors can be removed and added at any time during the competition season. To remove a mentor, use the drop down arrow at the end of their row and select Remove Mentor. Next, let's talk about the training resources available to teams. Once a coach has registered, they gain access to the online modules, which are PDF modules that provide entry level explanation of the skills needed for the competition. They are the recommended starting point for the competition and can be accessed by coaches, technical mentors, and team assistants on the competition dashboard. Teams also get access to Cisco Networking Academy, where there are self-paced courses available to anyone, as well as a Cyber Patriot training course, which you get access to closer to the competition season. Cyber Patriot provides several non-competition rounds for teams to practice. The first is the exhibition round. These are demonstrations to potential coaches, mentors, and competitors about what the Cyber Patriot competition images look like. They're not super challenging, but just meant to demonstrate the type of vulnerabilities that teams find during the Cyber Patriot competition. Next is the training round, which goes September 8th through October 4th. This is an introduction to Cyber Patriot. It includes an answer key, which is a list of vulnerabilities and detailed instructions on how and why to fix them. There are typically three images included in the training round. The sneak peek is a one day event in September that is a test of the new competition software. The practice round, which goes October 5th through the 15th, is a re-release of the training round images, including their answer keys, but it introduces the new competition scoring system and any new sounds or alarms that may be included in this season. Cyber Patriot also has an interactive demo, which acts as a hands-on demonstration of a Cyber Patriot image. You can be guided through how to find vulnerabilities while in tutorial mode, or jump right into finding and fixing vulnerabilities like a competition image. The demo is available year round and is an excellent resource to use to demonstrate what the competition is like to school or organization administration or potential competitors and mentors. To get the demo, please visit the Cyber Patriot website and complete the demonstration software order form. Next, I will guide you through the competition or scored rounds. First, let's talk about competition preparation. The download email is sent the Monday prior to the competition. 
It will include software download links and instructions, image download links and instructions, Cisco packet tracer information, and other information specific to the round. The Stardex email will be sent at the start of the round, which is Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. New this year is an expanded Cyber Patriot competition window. The competition window is the time that the server is open in order for a team to compete. This year, the competition window will start Thursday at 9 a.m. and go till 10 p.m., then reopen Friday from 9 a.m. and close at midnight. Saturday, it will go from 8 a.m. until midnight. Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. All of these are in Eastern Time. New in Cyber Patriot 16 is different competition schedules for the middle school division and the two high school divisions open in all service. The middle school division will now only have three rounds of competition and have a later start, allowing more times for Cyber Patriot middle school teams to form and train before they compete. Let's start with the high school divisions, which are the open division and all service division. High school divisions start in round one, which goes October 19th through the 23rd. All approved teams are eligible to compete. Teams will get two competition images as well as a Cisco quiz and packet tracer for the competition. Round two will go from November 2nd through the 6th. All approved teams are eligible to compete even if a team didn't compete in round one. Teams will have three competition images in round two as well as Cisco Packet Tracer and a Cisco Quiz. Following round two, open and all service division teams are then placed into tiers specific to their skill level. Tiers are determined based on the cumulative scores from rounds one and two. The top 30% of teams go on to the platinum tier, the middle 40% of teams are in the gold tier, and the remaining 30% of teams go into the silver tier. Please note, only platinum tier teams can qualify for the national finals competition. The all service division uh, percentages are also based on their service category, meaning 30% of Air Force Junior ROT teams go into the platinum tier, not the whole all service division. The state round will go from December 7th through the 11th. This is a standalone round, meaning scores from prior rounds do not count towards advancement to the semifinals or for state awards. All approved teams are eligible to compete, even if the team did not compete in previous rounds. If you did not compete in previous rounds, you're automatically placed into the silver tier. Teams will have three images to compete on, as well as a Cisco quiz and packet tracer for all the tiers. State and tier awards are given out based on the scores in just the state round. The state award is given to the top three teams in each state in each division. State awards are earned by tier, then by score, meaning platinum tier teams will always outrank gold tier and gold tier teams will always outrank silver tier. Tier awards are given to the top three teams in the gold and silver tier in each state. State round scores also determine advancement to the semifinals. In the open division, the top 25% of teams advance in each tier. We also advance the top scoring team in each state as a state wild card if they did not qualify as part of the 20, top 25%. In the all service division, the top 25% of teams advance in each tier. To ensure representation in each of the categories in the all service division, we also advance the top six scoring teams in each category as wild cards if they did not advance as part of the top 25%. The semifinal round is a three day event that will run January 18th through the 20th. Only teams that qualify for the semifinals are eligible to compete. Depending upon the tier, teams will either have two, three, or four competition images in the semifinal round, along with a Cisco quiz and packet tracer. In addition, all tiers will face the Boeing Cyber Physical Systems Challenge. Platinum tier teams will also face off on a Cyber Patriot web-based challenge. 
Now we'll cover the competition rounds for the middle school division. The middle school division will start in the introductory round from November 2nd through the 6th. All approved teams are eligible to compete in this round. Teams will face two images as well as a Cisco quiz and packet tracer. Next is the state round, which will go from December 7th through the 11th. All approved teams are eligible to compete, even those that did not compete in the introductory round. Teams will face three competition images, as well as a Cisco quiz and packet tracer. In the middle school division, state awards will be based on the cumulative score from the introductory round and the state round. The top three scoring teams in each state and at-large region will be awarded a state award. Advancement to the semifinals will be the top 60% of teams, again based on the cumulative score from the introductory round and state round. Semifinal round for the middle school division will run January 18th through the 20th. Only teams that qualify for the semifinals are eligible to compete. Teams will face two competition images along with a Cisco quiz and packet tracer exercise. The middle school division teams will not have additional challenges like the high school division teams face. Advancement to the national finals competition is only based on scores from the semifinal round of competition. In the high school divisions, only platinum tier teams are eligible to advance. In the open division, the top 12 teams advance with a limit of two teams per school, organization, or coach. In the all-service division, the top two teams in each category in the all-service division plus one wildcard team advance, with a limit of one team per school, organization, or coach advancing. In the middle school division, the top three teams advance, with a limit of one team per school, coach, or organization. The national finals competition will run March 15th through the 19th, 2024, and it will be held at the Bethesda North Marriott Hotel and Conference Center in Rockville, Maryland. All expenses will be paid for the national finalist teams, and scholarship funds are on the line for the top high school division teams. Teams will arrive on Friday, March 15th, have a competition orientation on Saturday, March 16th, Compete on Sunday, March 17th, and the awards banquet will be held on Monday, March 18th, with teams departing on Tuesday, March 19th. Next, let's talk about the technical specifications needed to compete in the Cyber Patriot competition. First, let's talk about some terms you need to know. Virtual machine, VM, or image is a virtual representation of an operating system used for the competition. During rounds of competition, teams are given several images of various operating systems to secure. Host machine is the physical computer that the teams are working from during the competition. Unique identifier or UID is a 12 character string of letters and or numbers that uniquely identify an individual Cyber Patriot team. Teams must input their UID into the competition images in order to properly, in order to be properly scored. Checksum is a small string of numbers and letters derived from digital data for the purpose of detecting errors that may have incurred during the download process. Checksums that do not match indicate an error in the downloaded file and the file should be re-downloaded. Whitelist is a list of trusted entities that can include email addresses, domain names, or IP addresses that have been granted access to a network or system by an IT administrator. For hardware, teams are required to have a 64-bit host computer and operating system, which is most computers made after 2011. Virtual extensions need to be enabled in the BIOS of the computer, there needs to be at least 8 gigabytes of RAM and 40 gigabytes of disk space. For display, an XGA or higher display is needed. For software, we recommend a 64-bit Windows 10 or later operating system. Mac and Linux operating systems can also be used, but at the team's own risk. 
If teams are using a non-Windows operating system, they should have at least one Windows computer that meets the technical specifications for the competition available. You also need WinMD5, which is software used for verifying the checksum of the images to ensure that they are fully downloaded without any errors. You will also need to have 7-Zip, which is used for unzipping the images after they have been downloaded. Teams will also need VMware Workstation Player for Windows, which is used to play the images after they have been unzipped. The official version of VMware Player for Cyber Patriot 16 is 17.0.2. Earlier versions of VMware Player are available, but issues stemming from their use of these versions are not grounds for appeal. Teams will also need Cisco Packet Tracer, which is used for the Cisco Netacad Challenge and can be downloaded from user accounts at netacad.com. The official version of Cisco Packet Tracer for Cyber Patriot 16 is 8.2.1. Now let's talk about network requirements. Cyber Patriot requires a DSL or faster network connection. Most common issues encountered by teams during the competition is network traffic being blocked by a school or organization firewall, filter, or proxy server. All teams will need outbound access to HTTP on port 80 and HTTPS on port 443. Website access requirements above should be whitelisted if they cannot be accessed through school or organization computers. Connection test software is available to test if a connection to the scoring engine can be established. This allows you to troubleshoot the connection prior to the team competing in a round of competition. This is a list of website access that teams will need during the competition. Now we'll walk through the steps in downloading and opening a Cyber Patriot competition image. Download instructions contain the links to download the images. Download instructions for non-competition or practice rounds are emailed to coaches at 5 p.m. on the day the round starts. Download instructions for scored competition rounds are sent the Monday before the competition round starts. Download instructions are only sent to coaches. Mentors will not receive the email. A coach alternate may be designated by the verification official for a competition round or a non-competition event if the Cyber Patriot coach is not available. For more details on that, please check out the Cyber Patriot rules book. In the download instructions email, click the download instructions button to open the PDF that contains step-by-step -step instructions on how to download and open the virtual image. You can also click the image information button from the download instructions email, which will open a PDF with the image download links. You will then need to copy and paste the link for each image into the URL bar of your web browser to download. After downloading the image file, which will take some time, Use WinMD5 to verify the checksum. To do this, you open WinMD5, drag and drop the zipped image file into the WinMD5 window, or click Browse and select the file. Once MD5 has calculated the checksum of the zipped download file, copy and paste the checksum provided by the Cyber Patriot Program Office in the download information to the lower text field. Then click Verify. If the checksums match, you're all set. Images can now be unzipped or extracted. If the checksums do not match, unfortunately, the downloaded file is corrupted and you need to download the file again. After verifying the checksum, you will then want to unzip or extract the image. The extraction password is provided in the StartX email. You will not be able to unzip the image until the start of the competition round. 7-Zip is the standard extraction pass software used by Cyber Patriot. To, you will right-click the downloaded zipped file, then select 7-Zip 
then select Extract here. You will then enter the extraction password exactly as provided in the StartX email. Note, the extraction password is not the, the team's unique identifier. It will take several minutes for the file to extract, and you can see an example on the screen of what a properly extracting file looks like. If the process only takes a few seconds, the password is not correct. The unzipped file will then appear in the selected location. Note the unzipped or extracted file does not have a .zip ex extension. A rookie mistake is to try and open the zipped file. We recommend unzipping an image file into a folder with a unique name, such as a color, so that you can easily find the unzipped image. To open the file, you will then open VMware Workstation Player. You will then go to Open a Virtual Machine. You will then locate the image folder that you unzipped or extracted and select Open. Note that the unzipped folder will not have a .zip extension. Then select VMware Virtual Machine Image and select Open. You will then click Play Virtual Machine. An important note is that the official competition time begins when you click Play Virtual Machine from your first image. If you are prompted, select I copied it and the virtual machine will open. You may also be prompted with pop-ups regarding removable devices and software updates. Click OK and Remind Me Later. Once you open an image, you will then read the Cyber Patriot competitor agreements. You will then click I agree and continue. Next, you will enter the 12 character unique ID, click apply and OK. As a reminder, each team's unique ID is listed on the volunteer dashboard. This 12 character code uniquely identifies your team for the scoring, scoring server. Unique IDs should be treated like a password. Do not share them with other teams. Correct unique IDs must be entered on competition days. You will then open the README file, which offers the scenario for the round, providing competition hints and information. Teams should read this once the image is opened. This is an example of what a README file looks like. As you can see, there's the competition scenario, as well as image-specific information. There's also a list of authorized administrators and users and their passwords. The scoring report shows the team's performance during the round. It also includes time competing, their score, any penalties, and connectivity issues. When your team is done competing, you will want to use the stop scoring feature to shut down the image and then close the image. All competition images should be deleted once the season is over. Certain image security settings may cause the stop scoring button to malfunction. If this happens, Please suspend the image by clicking the player drop down menu, then clicking power, then clicking suspend guest, and then click yes to the pop up. You can also shut down or restart the host computer and then do not reopen the image. If you reopen the image, you may incur an overtime penalty. Teams have four hours to complete all assigned tasks during the competition round. Reminder, time starts when the first image is opened in VMware. Only one instance of an image may be open at a time. You cannot have multiple copies of the same image running simultaneously. Remember, just one image per computer. An acceptable configuration is a Windows 10 image and an Ubuntu 20 image being open at the same time, but not two versions of the Windows 10 image being open. Teams may use notes and training resources during the rounds. 
All resources must be publicly accessible to all teams. You should not be using resources that require a paid subscription. If an image experiences issues mid-rounds, you can extract a new copy and start over. But note that will cause your score to revert to zero for that image. You can also stop what you're doing and accept the score you had prior to experiencing the issues. Now we'll talk about the Cisco Netacad challenge. Cyber Patriot Cyber Diamond sponsor Cisco generously donates the Cisco Netacad challenge to the Cyber Patriot competition. Teams have access to two parts of Cisco Networking Academy. The content course is what is used to train teams on what they need to know for the competition. The competition course is used by teams to compete in the Cisco Netacad challenge during competition rounds. Cyber Patriot will enroll coaches and mentors under the email address that they are registered with in the Cyber Patriot system to the Cisco Netacad content course. Coaches then create their own content course, leveraging the Create Course button and can add their students to that course. For the competition course, coaches must create an email address and Cisco Netacad account just for the competition. The team number should be included in the email address for easy identification of teams and score attribution. Content course accounts cannot be used for competition. Each team must have a unique account. In previous years, Cyber Patriot created these accounts, but due to new verification requirements within Cisco Networking Academy, we are no longer able to create them for teams. The deadline to complete the creation of the competition course account is October 12th. All teams should read and review the Cyber Patriot Rules Book. To find the Cyber Patriot Rules Book, go to the Cyber Patriot website and then the Competition tab and select Rules Book. If you have any questions about the Cyber Patriot competition, please feel free to reach out to us at info at uscyberpatriot.org or call us at 877-885-5716. If you have technical questions or competition specific questions, you can email them to cpoc, C-P-O-C at uscyberpatriot.org.